What's up, guys? Welcome back to the Team Swim Circus Live Duel. Turn on the left side here. We have Ragnarika, so hold on, because I don't know very much about this deck at all. Uh, and then on the right side here, we have Sky or Runic Snake Eyes, I believe, actually. Uh, we're off the Sky Strike cards, back onto the Runic cards, still with those Sky Strike cards. Before we dive in, over to like, comment, subscribe, we're actually going to be seeing Organic Ragnarika uh, on the left. And um, so they're going to start off with a copy of the Ragnarika spell, which can let them search here for the Evil Seed. Uh, you know, these are the two secret rares. And then we can actually pitch. We're going to pitch the Dark Serpent, which summons himself out when he's discarded to the graveyard here. And then we're going to be pitching Ogotic card to, uh, to dump another Ogotic card here. Um, and that's really about all that I know. <laughs> we're going to be seeing the effect to banish to summon himself out. And then we're going to actually summon out a other copy of the level 4 from the graveyard here. You know, dumping those cards and then being able to summon them back out. It's pretty nice. Uh... And then we can add an Ogotic spell. We're adding the one that summons the tributes like from the uh, levels and then makes their tokens and stuff like that, which is pretty cool. You know, let's us link summon as well. Um, then we're going to be activating the effect to dump once again here with the other one. You know, one dumps a light, one dumps a dark. And we're going to dump the Ragnarika dark monster, which is pretty cool. And we get summoned back out that dark. So now we can overlay for a copy of the King of the Feral Imps. We're going to act for the effect, and we're going to search. I actually don't even know what we're going to search here. This is the first time I'm watching the combo other than when I was playing against it the other day. We're searching for the Serpentine Princess. This has a really good synergy with the Ragnarok Links, being able to put them back to the bottom. Of the, we'll put that card back to the bottom of the deck. Some of the links there, and then of course that's going to be triggering in the deck, which is kind of wild to say that you know you can't trigger cards in the extra deck. Talking about you, Mirror Jade. Um, when it's bounced, but you can activate cards that activate in the deck. What is that? Uh, we're going to be seeing the Ogatic spell going to be activated now, tributing off, and then putting out those tokens here. Uh, four tokens, because it was a level eight. And then we can link those away, going for a link three into a copy of the Ragnarika link three. I will eventually learn these cards. Um, but unfortunately, I do not know them for now. Or actually, not the Ragnar Rank. It's going to be the um, the Alien Rank, or the Alien Link 3, which searches us for the Trap card. Uh, it just places all the A counters, and if they don't have A counters, they get destroyed, uh, which is kind of just disgusting. And then we're going to be seeing the Serpentine Princess being discarded, summoning out that copy of the Evil Seed. And then Evil Seed will be able to activate its effects here to search us for a copy of the Samurai Beetle. And you can actually banish, or you can place the, uh, we're going to be banishing a spell there, the Evil Seed, or the spell. You can actually place a, uh, uh the, the monster that we banished the off of uh you can replace it back to the deck for with a samurai beetle to summon himself out which is pretty cool from the hand we're going to be linking away for a copy of i'm assuming the alien link 2 or no this is going to be the uh the ragnarika one. Oh, this is the alien oh yeah the shock trooper okay and then we can summon out the copy of the Samurai Beetle by shuffling back. And we're going to go into the rank, uh, the Link 2 here. I keep saying rank. I don't know why. We're going to be summoning out the copy of the Princess. And then we're going to be summoning out the other body there. Because once the Samurai Beetle hits the Graveyard, uh, you get to summon back out at level 4, which is going to be the Princess. Then we get to go for the Link up. And then we're going to be dumping or banishing here that copy uh, to summon out from the deck. Or search for the trap, I suppose. See, I'm still I'm still learning the card. I'm still learning. And then we're going to be activating the effect of the link, putting it back into the deck. And then we're going to activate the effect of the princess to summon out from the deck, which is so wild. Uh, we can summon out a level three. But what do we choose to summon here? Summon a copy of Ghost Ogre, because it can be used on the field as well. Nice little form of interaction. Or, and thus we are, we might be locked. So we're going to go for an Evil Seed there, just in case. I think we are just locked here, which is a reason. And 
we are going to be linking up. I thought we we're going to be linking up here. So we're going to be linking up here for a copy of the big one there. And then we're going to set two cards and just pass turn on this. You know, one of those cards being that trap that tributes an alien. So let's see how they start to pile this through. And I'm seeing your runic tip going to be activated. Uh, and Todd loves runic cards in case you guys were wondering. It's probably his favorite deck, to be honest. We're going to be seeing a Destruction being searched. And we already had the Fountain in the hand. So we're going to see a Fountain being activated here. I think we ended up banishing the princess there, the nightmare, pr or the the serpentine princess. We're going to see destruction targeting the one of the back rows there in the evil seed column. We're going to get a draw too. So it is the copy here of that uh, virus. I'm going to be cheering it off, and then we're going to be chaining a copy of freezing on the or flashing fire on the copy of, and we get, oh my gosh, we just have it all. We're gonna respond with a trap and we're gonna respond with another copy of, free, we're gonna respond with a copy of freezing curses here to summon. And so Todd's gonna protect the field spell there. Now we're gonna be banishing six cards and we get to activate the effect of fountain here the back and they're trying to destroy that field spell but unfortunately just we're not able to get there and we even have an extra runic card in the graveyard and we get the draw three which is very nice uh, in this deck and be able to just replenish your hand uh, especially when we saw all those cards that were just being used but it looks like we see just so many runic cards here with a copy of smiting storm as well to summon we're gonna summoning out that copy of the hugan activating the effect here discarding a copy of snake eye ash and that's gonna let us search for a second copy of fountain so maybe having a slumber in hand as well to place the second fountain on the field. And then we're going to be able to draw another three cards because we still, once again, didn't see anything really nice. And then we had Snake Eye Ash. So like we still had plays that we, if we wanted to, we could have made, um, but maybe we wanted more there. So we're going to normal summon with the Oak, which can activate the effect to add back the Ash. And then Ash can actually summon itself out. So just using that Ash as another like extender, you know, if I have an Oak, I'd rather just summon out the Ash from the graveyard. We're going to search for the Poplar. Poplar can activate its effect, searching for a copy of is this dramatic chase? It just might so be. Interesting that we're playing dramatic chase. Maybe because we just don't play any hand traps. We have another couple cards to fill in because the runic cards don't take up as much. Uh, we're going to be seeing them activate the effect of Ash, something with the copy of Flame Bridge. And it looks like it was from the hand. You know, those draws must not have been the greatest. We're going to go for a copy of Hita, and then we're going to be seeing the effect of Flame Bridge to bring back out both bodies. We can then activate the effect of Hita to take a Link 2, which is a fire as well. Very uh, beneficial for us. And then we're going to be linking those away for a copy of the Appalooza for 2 here. And so now we're kind of protected from those hand traps. They don't have a battle phase though, so they're going to activate the, or they're just going to link away for a copy of IP. They're going to open to a princess. Princess will be able to bring back out the copy of Flame Burge. And we're going to see Poplar, Flame Burge, we got bought back by Princess. We're going to link away for a Raging Phoenix. Then we're going to go for a copy of the Zelantis here. 
Then we're going to go field spell over field spell, slumber on the copy of the Appalooza. We're going to be banishing multiple cards, and then we get to draw once again. We go Dramatic Chase here to place that copy of Diabell Star in the Spell and Trap card zone. So we're actually losing the copy of Flame Bird, which is kind of wild to me. Um, I'm not too sure how we're going to try to get another fire on the field. We're going to go Poplar discarding the Diabell Star. Set the Trap Betrayal uh, from the deck, which is very interesting. It sets it there, so yeah. We're going to banish to Dramatic Chase to summon up the copy of Poplar during the end phase. That definitely, that's a cool effect to use. I thought it had to be a Diabell Star, but it happened to be able to be the Poplar as well. To get that fire in the graveyard for the copy of Flame Bird is just very nice. Um, and then, of course, when Poplar hits a graveyard, I can summon up a copy of Flame Bird as well, which is really cool. I wonder if the Poplar should have placed a Flame Bird instead. Uh, unless maybe that card has to target a level 1. I'm not too sure. So passing it back to this, it looks like we didn't draw into any more runic cards. Kind of unfortunate there. We're going to be seeing the link to activate effects to try to put back. It's going to look like it's going to resolve here, putting back that copy of the Evil Seed. You know, they don't really want to negate that. What's interesting is, like, once you start losing cards from your deck when you're playing a weird combo pile, your plays get to be very, like, significantly different because you don't actually have those lines in your deck anymore, which is really uh, unfortunate, but... Like we saw them play through turn zero with ease with those runic cards. Like having those four runic cards in the hand to start off, including the copy of Tip and Fountain there to search for that missing piece they were missing. Um, is like just kind of crazy. And then drawing into all Snake Eye cards. Like you imagine if we would have saw maybe not a Flame Bridge in the hand and instead it was another copy of a runic card. So you can get that, you know, runic card activation now. That would be just like disgusting. We're going to be seeing the Samurai Beetle summon himself out here. Then we're going to go Princess to destroy them. And then Poplar will activate its effects, placing the Flame Bridge into the Spell and Trap card zone. We're going to be using the Trap effect. I have zero clue what this one does, but... I'm assuming he's going to stop the placement of Flame Bridge somehow and try to destroy the back row. We're going to slumber once again here. Just to put back one and draw. Okay, okay. We're just getting a nice little upstart. We still place that copy of Flame Bridge there. So what does that trap actually do? And now it looks like we're going to normal summon out one of the Ogotic cards. And we're going to be seeing it tributed off to summon it out. And will that get hit with... Oh, nope. Not going to get hit with the betrayal. And 
and get some a copy of Poplar. It does negate the effects, but. We're going to be seeing the other guy summon himself out. I experience effects to search. Searching for the water lily here. We're going to take a second to read the water lily. And then we're going to activate the effects to put back five. Or we act, how many do we have? Okay. Yeah, I got zero clue where we're going with this. And we don't have a battle phase the next turn as well, so... Is there a plan just to start pushing cards in the back row? We're going to go talents here. We ha yeah, we have to negate this. And we are pretty low on gas. They have only one card left in hand. They can link up. You know, they have a link three and a link four to go to. I think the link four is already used as it's in the back row right now. That could also be a link five. I'm not too sure. I'm assuming it's a link four, though. We're going to see a link two go for the copy of the TCG exclusive, that little uh, whatever it's called, lizard thing. Armored Lizardo or whatever. <laughs> I don't even know. It's a funny looking card. I'm going to see it destroy itself. And then we can summon out the level, th the link three. We're then going to activate the Water Lily, and that summons out the boss monster of the deck with air quotes there. Um, and then we get to get rid of three monsters on the field. Getting rid of the Appalooza, the, uh, the other Diabella Star, and then, of course, the uh, whatever its name is. The Zelantis. Like, we are picking apart this board crazily. And then we dump. We were shuffle back, dump, summon the Sea Serpent guy. And then we're going to be destroying Poplar. And then we're going to get the effect of the uh, fire. The Raging Phoenix has summoned itself out and then gain the attack. Then we're going to attack into the Princess here and then attack into. Um, the Raging Phoenix here. Then we get to attack directly with that 16. And we somehow picked apart the boards. Both times here, both players have picked apart these boards. Kind of crazy, to be honest. Both on one card in the hand as well, you know, using those cards that they have. Getting that resources just to pick through those stuff. And then continue. And we're not even done with the Ragnarika plates here. We're going to be linking away for a, another monster. And then we're going to be banishing to summon or whatever. We just pass turn on that. So now we have the link two and the, I believe, link four. And then, of course, the boss monster. We have a wanted in the hand as well to add back the Diabuster from the hand. And I don't think we've used Origins at all this, this whole time. Um, but we can banish... The wanted to add or to put the um, whatever it's called back to the chase dramatic chase to the bottom of the deck to draw a card here and we have a smiling storm in the hand so we can actually use diabell star to send uh, the copy of the um, whatever it's called the flame bridge from the field to the graveyard summon himself out and then flame bridge can activate its effects to summon out two as well as Diabellster set the Origins, and we're going to go Ash as well as the Oak, and then we're going to be able to add to the hand a copy of Ash, and we're also going to be adding the copy of Dramatic Chase with the uh, Poplar there. So we have a bunch of monsters summoned here. If we played a copy of the... Uh, Underworld Goddess, we might be able to see that right now. But we're going to go for 
a copy of the Anima. And then where does he pop player place the copy of Flame Bridge? Going up into the copy of Dark. Dark can take. Going into a copy of Selene. You know Dark being the spellcaster there. We're going to be having plenty of spells. So we're going to go with adding up into the copy of Diet Bellstar. And then access code. We're going to start popping the field here. So we use a dark, a light, a wind, and now we're going to do a water to pop, leaving just that card in the background, which is not supposed to normally be there. Um, but we have used a copy of a runic card. Therefore, we don't have a battle phase this turn. So we're going to use the effect to summon out a copy of Flame Burge, and then Flame Burge will put the IP into the spell and trap card zone. So maybe going for a, a SP line in the end phase here, and we're going to go another dramatic chase, placing the Diabell start. And then we can do end phase, summon up the Diabuster if we wanted to, or we can just wait for the following turn to do that. And there, I'm now on two cards here, and we have an Appaloosa, or we have an Active Field that's very big here, being a 53, as well as the uh, the IP and Flame Burge little combo there for that SP. Will the Ragnarika player able to take through this though? And they are. Mind you, they are up in damage. Um, we are approaching time, you know, this being sped up almost two times and uh, it being 21 minutes in. We're going to see the Evil Seed being summoned out, Flame Bird summoned out the copy of IP. You know, they are now on one card each, right? Or I guess the one card unknown. We're going to be seeing the Ogotic card summon out. They're going to be chaining to go for that copy of SP. We summon out that monster. SP effect can activate as well as Flame Burge, and I think that they have the Ogatic effect as well. I don't really know, to be honest. Oh, we can summon back that one from the Graveyard, so we're going to summon out the copy of Diabellstar. Its effects are negated, but that's fine. And then we're going to be banishing with SP, and we summon back out the Oak, or the Poplar, as well as the Ash. Then you want to activate the effect of the Ogotic Monster, which searches for the spell. We chain SP there to banish both targets. And we haven't activated our Runic Star, so if we do get the ability to go to next phase, or our next battle phase, we will be able to do it. So we kind of don't want to use that Smiling Strand that we see in the hand. We're going to see the Water Lily activate its effects here. I wonder if Pot of Avarice would be good in this deck. Like We see so many monster cards in the graveyard for the Ogotic player. Um, being able to shuffle them back might be kind of beneficial for us. But we're going to be summoning out that copy of the big guy. Then we're going to be seeing Princess pop with the Poplar. And it's summoning itself out here. And we really have this single-handedly dealt with like every single one of these cards. But no matter what we do, they keep coming back out. Like we're going to be summoning back out that little guy. And then we're going to be activating the effect of the Ragnarika Link to summon it back out. And then we're going to be activating the effect of the other Ragnarika Link to summon up the level the Link 2. Um, I believe that Link 2 has an effect that lets us summon out one from the graveyard as well. Yeah, we're going to summon up the Stag Beetle here. Or the Samurai Beetle. That's going to be able to, if once it touches a graveyard, to summon out another body. That's a nice little link plays here. And you see them link away into a copy of the lizard again. Okay, it was put back to the extra deck. Oh, that's funny. Then we're going to be seeing the effect negating, I believe, the... Or, no, we turn the Axis Code attack to the 800 there. And then we're going to be putting that back into the deck to summon up the copy of the Link 3, I believe. And we didn't act with the Samurai Beetle either. Um, we may not have... I mean, we thought we had the Evil Seed, but 
They're going to go Battle Phase and attack over the Axis Code once again. You know, dealing some damage here. You know, turning that to 800 is quite significant there. We set a card and we just pass on this. We're going to go Dramatic Chase to summon out the copy of the Flame Burge here. Um, and then we're going to be able to bring back the SP alongside that copy of the level 4. And we have... We're just going to go Battle Phase here and that's just going to be game. And I believe time is going to get called here. They're shuffling it up. Yeah, okay. Okay, we're, we're getting we're getting close. We're going to be seeing the Ogotic player choose to go first. And we see a copy of the seed or whatever the seed starter um, to search for that copy of evil seed. Like we're approaching time like right away here. Like I don't even think we're going to have a second to activate any effects. Like they just show they have enough to go battle phase in this game. And then they're just gonna, not even siding here. Like do you, we're not even siding. We're just going straight into game two. We're going to act for the specs to dump. And we, we see the, the, the main deck flip face up here. Um, but we're going to go normal summon out the seed, activating the effect, searching for a copy of a couple of our bodies, the two of them there, and I believe we have the discard one or banish one. And we're going to be summoning out, summoning out once again. Um, I believe we do play a time card here. We're going to activate the effect. And that's going to be, or we're going to activate the effect to search here. Uh, we do get rid of the evil card or the evil seed searcher, the spell. We're going to link away for a copy of... Yeah, we probably activate the spell for some of those four bodies. It doesn't matter what zones they're in. We saw them being pushed to the side. They're going to go for the link two. Then we're going to be able to summon back out the evil seed. Then we're going to go up into the aromage card. We're going to attribute to gain a thousand life points here. And that's just going to be it. And we see a tie from this Ragnarika player. You know, both these decks are very, very grindy. I would love to see what would happen in a full match here that's out of time. But unfortunately, it's not the game of Yu-Gi-Oh. We saw that handshake there of, you know, uh, respect. Um, both players had a good time. And I hope you guys enjoyed watching the video as well. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe to see more content like this. Hope to stay safe. Peace.